You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome to a brand new series on the Chronicles of Aguna channel called Chronicles Meets with me, your host, Mike Stavro. You might be thinking, where's Harry? Well, he's let me take the reins for this new interview series where we're going to be talking to a host of people from the Arsenal world, players, podcasters and loads, loads more. For the first episode, we wanted to chat to the one and only Kevin Campbell because he is adored by Arsenal fans and he's never, ever shy of a strong opinion. Let's get into it. Welcome to the first ever episode of Chronicles Meets with the one and only Mr. Kevin Campbell. Kevin, welcome. I don't know about you, but um, are you almost glad to be having a slight break from watching the utter madness that is asked for at the moment? Uh, no, I'm not, to be honest. Um, the break, some people like the break. I don't like the break. I'd much prefer Arsenal to be playing. And, um, you you just want it to be continuous high up. Yeah, why days, not? Let's Arsenal get let's drama. get it to where we need to get it. You know. <laughs> yeah, the process as a, as one. Mr. I'm prepared, Mitchell, I it. Mike. I'm prepared for the pain. So, <laughs> for the pain. That's a good way to look yeah. at it. That is a good way to look at. It. So I don't want to like sort of go too much into in into the the match reaction because you know we've we've discussed it. It was uh, it was a little while ago now. But um, just just quickly touching on that that last game before we went into the international break because we want to go into sort of where it, it's left Arsenal and, uh, and and the trajectory that they're on. But just looking at at that game against West Ham, what what sort of way do you look at it, Kevin? Do you look at it as um, like glad that that we came back and what a comeback, or how the hell will we three 0 down inside thirty two minutes? Well, I know I know why we were three 0 down uh, in thirty two minutes, because everything was slow, everything was ponderous. Um, there was no cohesion in the team. You could see, you know, even the second goal sums it up. Free kick on the edge of our box. Everybody goes to sleep. People turn their back. These are professional footballers. Do you know what I mean? Someone's got to stand on the ball, or someone's got to organise, but they don't. They switch off. West Ham go through and score a, a, a goal, which I thought Leno should have saved. Then they go 3 nil up. And then you're thinking to yourself, here we go again. We've seen this happen with Arsenal before. Game's blown out in the first half. But I like to try and look at the positives as well, Mike. And I saw a reaction. I saw the team start to try and put some things together. Obviously, um, Lacazette, pull the goal back and you're thinking 3-1, well, you know, what's going to happen second half? But yeah. if we're honest, you know, that couldn't have been a better second half for, for Arsenal. And um, we blitzed them. We're all over them. They're going to get some some of the ball, of course. They're, they're a good side. But in the end, you know, they were happy with the point because we could have beat them. But if somebody said to me, you'd be 3-0 down after 32 minutes, but you'd end up 3-3, I'll take it. You'd take it. I would, I would, then, of course, of course I'd take it if we're 3-0 down it. after 32 minutes. Of course. But then you have to you have to look at the, the the flip side and say, you know, we are gifting way too many goals this season too easily. And and how does that how does that stop? Um yeah, but how nothing, do we how do we get there? There's, Mike, there's nothing you can do when, when you're three 0 down, there's nothing you can do either you capitulate which we've seen the team do, or you can fight. And the team showed some fight. That's why I'm looking at the positive. That's why. Mr. Positive. All right, let's see, let's see well, if you're going to be positive well, look, with, it, with this next bit we're going to talk about. I'm, right? not, I'm not going to be negative like some this. of them some of them other Arsenal fans because you know what? Yeah. It ruins your day. It does. It does. It ruins and I think, your day, man. You walk, around, yeah. you walk around with it like a backpack. Nah. Yeah, you do. It weighs you down sometimes, but you just have to. You're you're right. You do have to look at the positives. But um, on a slightly less positive note, obviously where that result has left us, where we are this season, ninth place in the table, twenty nine games, twelve wins, six draws, eleven losses. Now I've seen some people float the idea about that um, we're in a sort of false position, in the sense of you know, given the size of the club, 
uh, the, the infrastructure and and where we are and almost where we used to be. So almost looking at, at the past. Do you see it as a false position or is it just an indictment of where we are at the moment? No, it's not a false position at all. This is where we, we deserve to be because we haven't been good enough, especially in the first half of the season. You know, in our last 12 games, in a form league, we'd have been six. But the game isn't 12... The game isn't 12... Uh, uh, the season isn't 12 games. So that is only a snapshot of our season. And you look at before there, I mean, we nearly lost five games at home on the trot. That's bad. That's terrible. So... You know we have to we have to take the pain, we have to dust ourselves off, and uh, there has to be some signs of of progress. There are signs of progress, but for some, it isn't quick enough. But I don't know what a lot of Arsenal fans expected. Yeah, you know, a lot yeah. of Arsenal fans probably expected a miracle. No, it's not going to be a miracle. It's going to take time. No, and it's, it's about tempering those expectations, isn't it? Because I feel like in a lot of fans' mind, and even, you know, in, in the first few few seasons, even in the last few seasons of uh, when, when Wenger was still there, um, and, and we were just sort of finishing in, in place, and obviously we, we dropped out uh, before he left as well. But um, even then, sort of like the, the expectations were like, all right, well, when are we going to challenge for the title again? And now it's like, now we're out of the Champions League. It's like, when are we going to get back into the Champions League again? Now we could potentially finish outside of the Europa League. It's like, when, when are we going to become that club that everyone thinks they are? So you're right to say it's about tempering expectations. It's, and it's about being realistic about that. But my, my, my question to you is, is like, how far away do you think we are from, from going back to, to reaching the highest? I'm not even saying... You know, challenge of the league titles because that is a big ask, just given by you know the standard of, of the other teams around. Uh, not not maybe this season, but in past seasons and where we are. So, if you could put a sort of time scale, what do you think is going to be a few seasons till, till we're back up in, in the top four? Could it happen next season? In your in your oh, mind, but it depends on the recruitment. It it depends on the recruitment. It depends on the consistency of the team, because. That's why we see us like a roller coaster. We're up, we're down, we're round, we're upside down. This isn't how a, a, a club like Arsenal should be operating. But this has been coming over the last 16 years. We last won our league title 17 years ago. It's a long time. And the, the club have been standing still for over a decade. Whether we like it or not, it's going to take time to the culture needed to change. Mikel Arteta came in, he saw that. He's, he got the players out, he needed to get out. And all of a sudden, you're starting to see us come back from being 3-0 down. We can come back. We go 2-1 down against Benfica in the Europa League. Shoot ourselves in the foot a couple of times. And then we come back. We're starting to see, we're starting to see some, 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 some grit and determination from the boys. But it's not going to happen overnight. And a lot, of, a lot of fans look to the past and say, so, oh, you know, we are this club. We're not that same club anymore. Yeah. We are not the same club. And the quicker people could get that in their head, the better. Because we are not the same football club. It could take a bit of time to get us back there, whether it's a year, whether it's two years. But we need solid transfer windows and we upgrading the squad at every chance. So when Arta talks about his process, Kevin, because I know this is a bit, has become a bit of a buzzword among the Arsenal fans, and almost it's a bit of a stick that fans use him. They they, they beat him with, with his own words and the, the, the sort of you know buzzwords that he's created. Mm -hmm. Do you do you trust in the in in the direction that that he's taken it? Because if if you look at it now, where a year and what three four months into his tenure. Um, the, the way I see it is he, he came in, he had a really tough job to do because the dressing room was a bit all over the place from the, from the previous manager. Um, you know, he solidified the defence. The, the league form, again, was inconsistent, but he got us the, he won us the FA Cup fine first season out, out of the way, um, knocked out the Europa League as well, obviously. And then we, we started the new season with a lot of hope. Um, and then we went on that awful run. Worst start in 46 years to, to a top flight campaign. Um, but then he sort of salvaged it a little bit. When we went on a on a nice little run of, over the winter period, um, you know, 
inspired really by by some of the youngsters like Emil Smith Rowe. And now again, we find ourselves in that position where the top four, the top six, probably is is looking out of reach. So all your eggs in the are in the Europa League basket. And my my question is really to you, Kevin: If we do end up this season and we don't go all the way in in the Europa League, how long, really? And I'm not expecting you to say, you know, our our test is gonna gonna get sacked or anything like that, but sort of how long do they do they give him before they start saying all right we need to possibly think about changing or does it all depend on the transfer market or for, for you what does it depend on there's, so, a, lot, there's, there's a lot of time picking no, that but but try no, no there ain't it's simple to be honest they chose Mikel Arteta to come in and change the football club so whatever the fans want to harp on about cry moan doesn't matter they have got the focus, they've got, they, they believe they've got the right man in the building. They believe Mikel Arteta is doing the right things. He's changing the culture. He's giving youngsters a chance. He's developing players, etc. The key sometimes comes how much he will be backed. And it might not be one summer, Mike. It might be two summers, two more summers. But you know what? I'll take progress next season, challenging for that top four. I think that's the problem. People are saying, oh, we're 10th, we're 9th, we're 11th. If we're in and around the top four, Arsenal fans won't moan. Because I think they'll be showing that progress that we can get there. Our problem has been the first half of the season was so poor. Now we're playing catch up. Can we get there? We can challenge, but. We're challenging from ninth place and not sixth or seventh. That's the difference. So I think Mikel Arteta's the, 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 the man in charge right now. He's, he's done something that a lot of managers don't do. In his first six months, seven months or whatever it was, he won a trophy. That proves he can get a song out of some of these guys in the cups. What we've got to do is we've got to be consistent in the league. And to be consistent in the league, we haven't been consistent in the league for numerous years. You need to upgrade the squad. And when we upgrade the squad and the, the players that is brought in settle down, then I think we're going to be all right, which which probably will be next season. Do you think, um, based on what, what you've seen now, and I, I know you're you're obviously keen to for, for the squad to be strengthened, but from what you've seen so far, do you think he has... Um, a managerial style yet has has he imposed that managerial style when 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 I say that I don't mean sort of off the pitch because we know that he's been quite you know frank to be fair he's he's been ruthless with with some decisions he's had to be but on on the pitch do you see a sort of distinct you know footballing philosophy we like to talk about because listen because I, I know been... what he wants to do Mike Mike I know what he wants to do we've seen what he wants to do in flashes. No. Like... But yeah, yeah, but that's not him. That's the players. If the players are crossing that white line, you know what the manager wants, and he wants you to go left, but you go right. Is that the manager's fault or is that the players' fault? It's the players. The players are not consistent enough. That's the bottom line. So again, I've argued with Arsenal fans about this. He hasn't got a style. He hasn't got this. The teams who tend to have the style, who, who, who go on long runs, etc., they're, they're the teams who have, have, have had players, they've got good players, who have players that have been there a while. And we're not talking about your West Ham's of this well, because let's be honest, West Ham just beat relegation last season. So these teams could have those seasons. Last season, Sheffield United were up there. So these teams could have these seasons. The key for Arsenal is they need to get consistent and that is our biggest problem so he knows his style we know what his style is the problem is the players don't play all the time first half against West Ham that wasn't Arteta's style second half against West Ham that was Arteta's style we saw it first half against Wolves we've seen it sparingly as we go but they're not consistent enough Mike and that's our biggest problem that's what frustrates a lot of the Gooners 
do you reckon that the squad just needs a like a complete overhaul then? Because if you're talking about that, you know, how many players really there are in the team that that he can rely on? Because for me, like I'm looking at at, at the core of the squad and you know, Leno, there's question marks over over him, I think. You know, should should we have, have kept Emmy? That's a that's a decision that they made. We've we've had to stick with it. And then you look at, at the centre backs. Um, we've got Gabriel who's come in, has has been impressive, but you know, there's not loads of you like top top talent in that department. And then you look at Thomas Party, all right, that that area for me is is good, but only half good because you look at Xhaka and again there's there's someone that has been you know much improved over the last few months, but he's he's not shown that consistently again over his Arsenal career. I think that's fair to yeah. say. Um, you know, and then and, and then up front for me, it's a it's a dilemma because you've got you've got Lacazette who uh, next season will be uh, his, his contract expires at the end of next season. Um, so there's a decision to be made there. Aubameyang is is another one who's been who's been up and down this season, obviously is a, is a natural goal scorer, but if he is the sort of striker that Arteta wants to build his team around, I'm not sure just, just based on, but by the way, he's sort of rotated him, you know, between left and played him striker recently. I'm not sure. So when you look at that, at that core, do you, do, do you literally think that it's just, it's just not, it's not quite there at all? Well, of course it's not quite there at the moment because look at our league position. Uh, we're going we're going fine in the Europa League at the moment. And I think our side of the draw is probably the the weaker of the lot. So, you know, we've got we've got something to look forward to, but it's our league form. And you you've not mentioned right back, um, which has been a, a Achilles heel for the team. We need a Kieran Tierney at right back, don't we? That's what we want. Want somebody who could be a Kieran Tierney, but on the right hand side, Cedric, I think, is, is a good player. He's done well when, when, once he's got his chance. But I think uh, I think Hector Bellerin is 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 isn't isn't quite there anymore. And mm. um, I seriously think we need we need a partner for Partey in the midfield because when when you get your Gabriels, when you get your Thomas Partey, etc. It shines the light or it, it, it puts the magnifying glass on the other positions. We've seen, we've seen Xhaka play better, but we know Xhaka isn't the answer. That's one thing we do know because he's been at the club five years. We're not qualified for the Champions League once, etc. So top end of the pitch, Lacazette, I think Lacazette is, is the better player out of him and um, Aubameyang. But I think Aubameyang obviously is the better goal scorer. And... They've had, a, they've had up and down seasons. But you're going to get that at times. You know, you can't... We can't just keep relying on, for instance, a, a, a Bamiyang scoring goals. Because you could look at Aguero. Aguero done it season, season, season. This season he suffered injuries. He's been out the team. But Man City, what do they do? They share the goals around. That's what you've got to do. That's what the good teams do. We are not that team. When a Bamiyang scores... That's why we're challenging at the top end of the, the league, Mike. But when Aubameyang isn't that striker at the moment, we're, we're ninth. We're, we're where we are. This is where we're supposed to be because we're not that good. We're not great. Yeah, yeah and also during that run as well, I mean, when we were literally dire, uh, you know, just, just before Christmas, how can you sort of look at Aubameyang and say, oh, well, he's not, he's, he's not banging in the goals I mean, obviously he's not. The team is playing terribly. You know, the striker is lacking confidence, and when when there's not confidence in the team, as you as you know, you can't just look at a and say, "Oh well, he scored 28 goals last season. Why is he not scoring again?" And you know, we we need a new striker. I feel like that is the the, the reactionary element of the of, of the fan base, just in a nutshell. Yeah, but that's what the fans will do. That's what they do. They don't look at they don't look at the the facts or the bigger picture, you know. They look they look at he scored twenty eight goals last season or what, however many. This season, he's not doing it. But they don't look at the fact the team's being awful. They're not creating any chances, etc. 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 You know we go we're going behind that puts more pressure on the strikers. Obviously, he's had his issues with his with his mother. And uh, and stuff like that. So, 
you know, it's all been piled on on top of it. And um, he hasn't performed at times. But he's still our best striker. And we've got to get him going. If we're, if we're going to win or challenge to win that Europa, we need to get a Bamian going. We need him. We do, yeah. No, 100%. Just looking at that, you, you touched on that Europa run. I know you said that our, our side of the draw has opened up, Kevin. But when you look at the previous rounds, you know, we sort of had to come back against Benfica in, in quite dramatic fashion. Um, it's fair to say we made lives difficult for ourselves against Olympiacos. Does that not concern but, you? Mike, that was only forward. because Aubameyang didn't have his shooting boots. Or, wait, in which game? In, in which game? Or, at, at was it, or was at it that Emirates. we, or, or was it that we couldn't manage the game? Or was it that, that we didn't no, take control to, of the nothing game? Nothing to, nothing to do with manage the game. The goal, the game is about scoring goals. Aubameyang had three guilt edge chances to score. Fluffed every single one. Did you not think that as, as a whole we were quite nervy? And we, 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 even though we had a, a big lead, we never looked like, you know, we were in, in control for the like for periods of the game. We, we had elements, you know, that the first half was okay, but in the second half, it looked like they, they were just scared, really. Yeah, but for listen, anyway. what, what happens is, this is what happens over a two-leg um, tie. You're up, you know, do do you go for it or do you sit back? And and whatever Mikel Arteta says to the players, go out there and make sure you score the first goal, go for the jugular. Once they cross the white line and see how the game goes, they play to the game. Now, Olympiacos have got nothing to lose. They can throw caution to the wind because if they get done 4-0, it's expected. And that's the most dangerous team. That had the most dangerous team. So they, they were holding on to what they had. It wasn't great. I, I agree. It was a it was a poor performance. But over two legs, what's the most important thing, Mike? You're in the hat. Win, yeah. You know, you're in the hat against Benfica. So by us, you know, that back header to make put them 2-1 up, you're expecting this team normally will go out. But they they showed a lot of fight to come back. So, again, our side of the of, of the draw has opened up. I think we have a we have a really good opportunity to 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 be um to get to at least the semi-final I I believe and um and then the final so we can only see but if we're going to win and Abamian came up trumps in in uh, against Benfica we've got to get him going we have to if we're going to win anything do you think do you, do you think he's the key then do you think he's hundred percent he's the he's the key to unlocking the rest of the season because I've seen. Um, I think you know. Sorry, Harry, if you're if you're listening to this, but I think he, he wrote an article the other day saying, you know, is it time to sort of cut Bamiyang loose? Is he is he the the way forward? Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the answer because. Well, let me tell I, you this, Mike. Let me just ask you this then. Let me ask you this: If we get into the semi final and Bamiyang doesn't play. And we get a hat full of chances. What's the first thing the fan base are going to say? Where's Abamia? Our best striker. Where is he? Yeah. But if he's on the pitch and he doesn't do it, then say oh, Abamia's not doing it. That's fine. But it's no point having our best striker on the sideline. It makes no sense. Yeah. No, I didn't mean. Sorry, I didn't mean wh whether he should play. I, I meant sort of moving forward in the in the longer term. Is he the right man? L listen, the the problem is, Mike. Where do you find a player who scores as many goals as he has? It's tough. <laughs> where do you find them, and how much are they going to cost? We haven't. We're not exactly blessed with a with a load of money at Arsenal. No. And we've already got him. We have signed him to a new deal. Get the best out of him. Put the bullets in his gun so we can start firing again. That's the name of the game. Where do you where do you see um, Arteta getting the best out of him? And and sort in what sort of do you, do you see it still as on the left or on the striker, or you're of the mind that it doesn't really matter? Just just play him. Uh, uh, listen, he scored twenty odd goals last season from the left, so it doesn't matter. The key to it is 
We need to be consistent and we need to be able to supply. Because Aubameyang, he's not a player who, like Lacazette, is good at bringing other people into the game. You know, he holds the ball up and, and that type of stuff to, to really help the team. He's a sharpshooter. He needs chances and he puts them away and that's the difference. That's what he needs to do. And we need to get him going. We need to get him chances. So whether it's from number nine or from the left or the right, I don't care. But we need to get him going. Yeah, obviously a big part of that, I think, is uh, our, our increased productivity in the last few weeks. Uh, for me, it's been uh, Martin Ogard. I think he's been he's been, he's been fabulous. Um, I, I remember we spoke as well, Kevin, before uh, before he joined, and you were you were singing his praises, and, you know, because you you've watched him in, in La Liga. And how impressed have you been with him so far? Yeah, I, I think he's getting better with every game. Um, he's got an economy to his game, and he's he's he plays the game simply. But sometimes that simple pass is the hardest pass. He plays it simple. He gets it back. And if you're a striker, I think Aubameyang needs to get on his wavelength because. Once Odegaard's on the ball, things start to happen. Things start to open up. And if, if a Bamiyan could get on the same wavelength or half the wavelength, he will get a lot of opportunities from that guy. I think the kid's special. I really do. He's, um, he's, he's immensely talented. And we're starting to see more of it now. I think I thought he was outstanding in the North London derby. I thought he was outstanding um, for an hour against uh, West Ham as well. And we need more of the same because I think we're going to need him come the end of the season. So it's obvious, you know, Arsenal not shopping in a, in, in the top, top market. Would you say if that was, you know, the, the, the only deal that we could carry out this summer, that it's worth it? Because obviously it's a player that we know, um, you know, we've seen in flashes that he can produce. Is it a bit? Is it a bit less of a risk to, to you know go and throw you know however much Madrid want for him if, if we can get him and then say, you know, that's that, no. that that's what we got to do or is, is that not enough? No, it's not enough. We want to improve, and we want to push on. So just signing Martin Odegaard, he's like it is now. It's not enough. But being realistic though, like. How much money did we do we spend last last summer? We we spent forty five million on Thomas Partey, then another twenty seven million on on Gabriel. You know we're not going to be breaking the bank essentially. So maybe is is it about looking at sort of smarter purchases to to sort of suit you know how how we run at the moment? Because you know you me every single Arsenal fan will want us to go and spend a you know, hundred million on Jack Grealish and you know get compete for Erling Haaland, but it's just it's just not possible. So. We, 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 what, one thing we've got to do is be realistic, 100%. Now, you asked me the question, if he was the only signing, would you take that for, the, for whatever money? And I said, no, because I think we have to... We, the other parts that we need take priority. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's a wonderful yeah. player. But if he's the only player we're going to bring in, it's like it is now. He's already at the club now. Yeah, and we're yeah. still shooting free goals. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So we need we need some of those other positions to be bolstered. And if we maybe if we could get him on another loan, then great, we take him on loan. But, you know, we, we, they, we'll find a way. We'll find a way how to make uh, more additions. I believe, that, I believe Edu and, and Mikel Arteta know the players they want. Already, they already know them, so I'm hoping that they're going to get the business done pretty quickly. How do you see the sort of? Um, I know they're obviously completely different players, but um, what do you think? Because they've uh, Odegaard, Emil Smith are obviously both played in the number ten position over the last few months. What do you think they they both offer the team in in, in terms of like their different qualities and sort of who do you see? As, as offering a, a bit more if you can sort of c compare the two? Well, I think Odegaard right now is the better player. He's the international. He's captain of his uh, of his, um, of his his um, national team. And he's he's had the, he's had the, um, the longer upbringing uh, and, and more games playing at Real Madrid, um, going on loan in Holland. 
going on loan to Real Sociedad, where was where was outstanding last season. Uh, but I think Emil Smith Rowe has come in. There's times where he's been spectacular, you know, really dangerous player with his one touch and two touch, and running in behind. Great link up player. Um, but Odegaard's a passer. He's a pass master. He's a he's a he's a player who again plays with that economy, and he could pick players out with a pass. Um, so I think they complement each other pretty well, to be honest. But there would be certain games where Smith Rowe obviously could be a lot more effective, and there's games where Odegaard is is more effective. But the fact of the matter is, the key is having it in your team where you can utilize them. That's mm. the key, you know. If you if I've only got one, then you've only got one, you've you've only got one quality player. Yeah. If you got both of them, then you could utilize both who are both quality players. So But it's just it's just so good to have them options because we were we were looking at it in like um October, November time, and there was nothing in terms of creativity. Like we were we were talking, I remember, and we were saying, where where is it? Where where's it coming from? You know, there's 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 no there's no dynamism, there's no well, in, in, well, injection no, well, of I wouldn't quite I wouldn't quite it wasn't say coming. that. I won't no, quite I, say I that. See, I, I was seeing that. I was seeing that. Well, you were saying that, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna gazump what you just said, because our creativity really was coming through Bukayo Saka. He was carrying the team, but through the middle of the park. I mean, just getting that you know the the the, the link between. No, the, but we're talking the about creativity, so it's not just the center of the pitch. That's my point. It's not yeah. just the center of the pitch. But what we, if if you're a good team, you need it coming from all over the pitch. Yeah, the production from the centre of the pitch wasn't great, 100%. But Arsenal Football Club has been carried by a 19-year-old, talented young player in Bukayo Saka most of this season. Then he's had his Robin, who was Emil Smith-Rowe, come in for the Chelsea game with Martinelli as well. Chelsea just couldn't handle them. With, with Lacazette up top, blitz Chelsea, beat them. You know, Chelsea couldn't handle them. But when you do get a player in like Odegaard and you see what he can bring to the table, if we'd have had Odegaard all season, do you reckon we'll be ninth? I don't think so. Even how bad we were previous. But when it's only one player or two players trying to offer a bit of creativity, yeah. that's where we're going to struggle. And that's why maybe Aubameyang struggled because he wasn't getting the chances. Yeah. You know, it's all connected. It's just it's it's just delightful for me to to see, you know. I think once he has you know added those creative players in, that yeah, it is more like the the sort of football that we were maybe expecting from from Mikel Arteta. And for me, sort of moving forward, as long as we can get rid of those those individual errors, which which obviously is down to to individuals, but you know there there are lapses in in concentration across the hole at times in, in defence like we saw against West Ham. If we can el eliminate that, I can see us firing up the, the, the table for me personally. Um, well, that's, just, that's, that's what's expected. Yeah. Isn't it? That's what's expected. Because if Mikel Arteta has another season, start to the season, up until Christmas like this one, the knives are going to be out, obviously. Because the, the fan base ain't going to stand for another start to yeah. next season like this one. That will be it, I think. I think, honestly, there will be there'll be serious questions. Um, and because even, like, I feel like when, when me and Harry have done have done these shows and we've been chatting with fans, I feel like the knives are already out for Arteta. Like, any mistake. And I don't really know why. And, you know, we can't speak for, for the whole fan base. But I feel like because he is that, that inexperienced manager, Ultimately, any mistake he makes is is going to be, you know, seen with a with a massive magnifying glass, and it's going to be like, oh well, why did they why did they take a chance, and 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 is it the right man? And it's the it's the constant questions. Um, and uh, yeah, you're right. If they do start off again, and uh, next season it, it it starts terribly, you know, it's it's not quite going their way. They're already far away from the top four. I, I can really see the, the the questions being asked. Just I just quickly want to touch on one more thing with in terms of Odegaard. Kevin, I think um, Arteta came out and said for him to become a complete player because he's, you know, spoken effusively about him uh, you know, on plenty of times this season. Um, for him to become complete, he needs to add goals to his game. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think that's a that's a realistic thing for him to make of that, course. you know, step up? Of course, 
Of course it is. You know, when you look at our midfield, where, how many how many goals do our midfield get? Zero. Don't get many. Pretty much. You get the odd. You get the odd one or two from Xhaka, maybe. But you know, we, of of note, when you used to look at Ramsey, maybe getting ten um, a season, that takes pressure off your strikers. Yeah. But when you're when your Pepe's chipped in a bit, and um, you know. Lacazette, uh, uh, there's Aubameyang, uh, you know, struggling. Saka scoring, but Saka should be on more than he's he's on. Smith Rowe needs to get got. So if if you put all of those players on five to ten, we're a different team. We're out there. We're a different team, but our problem is we haven't we've relied too much on Aubameyang for years, and when Aubameyang's not doing it. We're seeing the, the house of cards starting to come in because all of a sudden we're ninth and tenth and all hell breaks loose. We're just we're just not a good we're just not a good team yet. Where once once someone's struggling, we can make it up the other side. And you look at any of the, the top Arsenal sides, they've got goals from everywhere. So you seem pretty positive, Kevin. From what I'm picking up, you seem pretty positive about the, the way things are going. You're seeing positive signs about the way it's moving forward, but your number one thing is is, is strengthening in, in the market. Yeah. And you think it, you think it all comes down to that. And then Yeah, I do. Yeah. And then in a way, like does that take the pressure off off, off Arteta a bit? Because it's like no. he no. but he can only do can he can he only do so much with with this squad though, is, is my question. Look the, the the key for Mikel Arteta is he's he can't wait to get to the summer, right? We know that. But what he's got to do with what he's got now, he's got to try and get the mentality and get the consistency to a point where we can move up that table for one and we've got to be able to compete to try and win that Europa League. That's the key. And then he gets to the summer and then he's got to be ruthless and start changing certain pieces in that team. Start changing certain pieces. You look at one one piece has changed with Martin Odegaard and we're seeing a different Arsenal. You start adding two or three different pieces, all of yeah, a sudden, you know, you, you've got an upgrade. Not saying that's going to make us be challenging anywhere or whatever, but it's an upgrade. And that's what, as long, for me, as long as Arsenal fans see that there's progress, I think they'll be, they'll, mo they'll still moan, but as <laughs> long as they see that moan. there's, as long as that, yeah, they see that there's progress, I think they'll be all right. Well, there we go. Well, you know, I want to leave it on a, on a positive note. That was uh, the excellent Kevin Campbell, former Gunner striker. And that was the first ever episode of Chronicles Meets. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simmons.